you how to make your own organic, um, natural and fresh bone broth. What about bone broth is firstly where you get those bones from. I'm half expecting like an eye to pop out of this thing or something. I tell patients a lot to make bone broth, but this is my actually my first time ever making it from scratch. I don't, half of me doesn't know if I can do this. Hi, welcome back to the Chinese Medicine Podcast. And today on Cooking with Herbs, we're going to be using this dung whey to make some um, bone broth in a Chinese medicine way. So we're going to be cutting up some um, dung whey, my big sharp knife, and um, we're going to be making bone broth with dung whey and using some fresh bones. So let's get into it. What, what, what do we need when you make bone broth? The, main, the first thing is you need the bones. And um, there's different methods that you use to make it. Now, I'm just going to be honest here and say I tell patients a lot to make bone broth, but this is my actually my first time ever making it from scratch. Um, so what I've done is I've gone down to a butcher and I found actually really nicely an organic butcher near me. So if you're in Perth, um, I'll put the link in the description below. And he's very kindly given me this bag of bone. This old bag of bones ain't really me. That is for my next YouTube videos. Um, I've got a pan an old pan and I've got the bones now what the butcher told me I'm gonna put the link to this butcher in the description he's a really lovely guy and um, the he, everything's organic there and like farm to I think the place is called farm to paddock or ta paddock to table or something like that um, and it's just in um, in Inglewood in Perth now I used to be a vegetarian and I would never have been able to sort of touch bones like this and cook them and whatever. So basically what he told me to do, I'm just going to follow his instructions r roughly but just change it a bit to my own way, is um, put these bones in the oven for 15 to 20 minutes, that's what he said to do, to brown them basically. And he said, I've given you a bit of, oh, a little bit stripping, with tender, tenderness juice. <laughs> he said, I've given you a bit of this tendon stuff, tendons, which will give it more flavour. I'm half expecting like an eye to pop out of this thing or something weird like that. Oh fuck! I don't. Half of me doesn't know if I can do this. Oh, I'm just gonna put it in. It's like I'm not a. I think it's a good. I think it's good to do this because I never said the receipt was in here. So how much is this? This is fifteen dollars forty worth of organic bones. Um, just if you don't believe me, oh, I touched it. Um, <laughs> So we're just going to spread that out, um, and because I think, like, it, look, if you can't, if you can't touch, if you can't touch it, it's hard. And like, I understand, like, sometimes people who are vegetarian who want to experiment with something a bit, like, they want to, they will take, they will drink bone broth. But I can understand if you, it would, it would be very, would have been very hard for me as a vegetarian to actually eat this. I, I don't know, I'm to, sorry, to actually make this. It would have been hard for me as a vegetarian to make this. So this is going to go into the oven now. We'll make it a little bit less than 180, but just... So this was, yeah, $15.40 and it's... So they're seven, it must be seven... Seven ninety nine a kilo and 15.4 kilos. Now, I actually think there's probably too, met, too much bones here for my slow cooker. I told him I had a... I told him I had a normal slow cooker, but I think he thinks I've got a big one because a super giant one <laughs> I've got a mini one and a, so we might have to make two experimental bone broths with with this and what we're going to do is we're going to use some dung whey um, and definitely you want to use bay leaves in it you need carrot and celery and so that's what we're going to use as the like the basis for it now you can use other things and different people make bone broths for different reasons so we're just going to cut up some of this celery I don't know it's already been washed I might just wash it again a little bit. Um, so, so yeah, I was very impressed with this butcher guy, and I think that's the part of the, the first thing with the bone broth is you need to find somewhere locally to you that can supply you with this with the quality of meat because there's no, there's absolutely no point in making it from supermarket meat I reckon because you just you're going to all this effort to make it and then you might be even boiling up toxins and stuff and what I was really excited about is that that would like, he knows his stuff so he told me how many hectares per whatever how many head per hectare there was of all this all the cattle and the things on the farms 
he sells eggs for and all that sort of stuff. So having someone like that that's knowledgeable. I'm just going to cut up some of this stuff. I'll cut up about half of that celery. I'm going to cut up about half of these carrots, which have been washed already. And obviously if you're going to the purpose point of doing this, it is better to use organic um, stuff, veggies and things like that. Um, and quality stuff, make sure you wash it. That kind of thing. So I'm just going to put these aside. So I'm just Googled a recipe for it just to double check it. And um, you know, you can modify this if you're on like the FODMAP diet or something, you don't want to have onion, you don't want to have something like that in there. So I'm not going to put onion in this one. I'm just going to put carrot and celery. Um, so this is saying, this recipe here is saying one onion, two carrots, two stalks of celery, um, you know, with two pounds of bones. I don't know how much that is in a kilo sense. But this is 15 kilos of bones that he's given me. Um, Herbs and spices to taste, two cloves of garlic. Um, this doesn't say bay leaf, but he told me bay leaf. I've got these organic bay leaves here. And the two herbs I'm going to use, very similar to the other recipe I showed you with cooking with herbs, is chuanxiong and dang wei. Now, dang wei is really easy to get hold of. You can get hold of chuanxiong in some shops as well, in those soup packs. If you buy the su tang soup pack, you don't need to add everything else in there, or you can if you want, I guess. But um, I, I like using dang wei in my cooking and um, chuan shong is good as a sort of a, a mild moving blood aspect to the to the to the formula but um it, in a chinese herb sense so it's basically used in tcm herbs they use it a lot when you want to tonify blood you need to have something to move blood and that's where it, that's why it's kind of added into that sul tongue recipe in a food recipe but I like it in cooking because of the taste of it. It gives it a soupy, earthy kind of flavour, and it's, so it's a nice flavour. But it's, um, yeah, it's like it's good. It's almost like it gives it that stock. It tastes like a stocky flavour, and it's got a really strong smell to it. Oh no! Oh, these are the super strong one that I can't open. Oh, I've got so many. Of oh, there we go. They've got so many of these jars, and sometimes they get stuck because they've been. Just sat there for a little while. So yeah, the, the smell of this is nice and strong. Um, and yeah, and then the dung wei, which has its own flavor, really strong flavor, angelica root. And look, there's lots of use in Chinese herbal medicine and classical herbal medicine even uses a formula where they mix meat with dung wei. So that's why I don't mind kind of using it in cooking because there's like precedent to use it. It's not really fully experimental. and So, it, it means that, I guess, if, to me, if it was good enough for Dr. Jun to mix it into his mate for people, then um, it's, a good, <laughs> it's good enough for me. So we're going to add some carrots in there. Um, well, it may, basically means that it can be, can be combined. Um, yep, so we're just going to have two carrots. experimental cooking with Chinese herbs, what I recommend you do is either experiment on a recipe you already know, so you've tried, tested and tried, you know that it's, you know how it works, you know what, how, what it works for, how it tastes basically, um, and then you can experiment with adding the herbs in the next time so that you know uh, if it's too much or too little of that flavour, how that's tasted for you. I have a feeling that the amount of bones he's given me, I'm going to need two slow cookers. Now, something that he told me, the butcher told me, was that um, one is with bone broth, it's better to eat it um, freshly or, or freeze it straight away. Now, the butcher did tell me he's got, a, he had this massive pot because they make it there in, the, in their place, that um, you can put it, you can basically brown it in the pot first. I'm not going to do that because I don't have a giant pot and I think the oven, he told me the oven way is good, so I'm just going to follow his instructions. And the other thing you could use, I guess, if you wanted to get the bone broth, is are these soup packs. Now, um, I buy these because of convenience, and it makes and it gets me to buy them. But there's a lot of plastic on here, which is annoying, like in, in, in the thing. And that's something that I think the supermarkets need to stop doing. Is they need to give you the give you the product. Maybe, maybe what supermarkets could do is make one as a display like this, 
Because people aren't going to buy it if they can't see it, but then the others are in a paper bag or something. Like, put all the other veggies just in a paper bag. So if you're watching this and you own a supermarket or Woolworths or Coles or IGA or Little Supermarket, that's something you could do. Like you could have one as a display and then you could have the rest in, in a paper bag. And I, look, I fully get that people don't want to see, they want to see what's in there, but they could open it up and see or something like that. I don't know. People have to think smarter now about things. How much, how much of this stuff do you need? How much of these herbs do you need? You don't need much at all. You need a little handful. So usually about, I think that would be about nine grams of herbs. Oh, it's sure pouring down. That would be about nine grams of herbs. So I'll just give about 18 grams in here because I just want to make it super, super duper. Fun. And I'm going to make this twine shell. I don't want too much of the twine shell. It's more just for the flavour and like, the effect of it. I just want probably half the effect. I'd rather have more done away because that's the blood tonic herb. And it's pretty, um, bay leaves, so I'm just going to put like one, two, three of them. They're nice and strong and that's organic, those ones. Yay. <laughs> um, then I'm going to put these veggies in here. Let's put a little bit on there for now. I do have this miniature slow cooker. Those bones can't all fit in that one. I'll put some in here and make a little mini one. We'll just have that over to the side there. So basically for the um, thing, you can have onion, you can have carrot, celery. Um, you could put root, more root vegetables in there if you want to. But bearing in mind with this, you're not eating, you're just eating the broth, you're eating the liquid. You're not eating all the veggies. Um, and so then you can have different herbs and spices. So you could have cloves, you could have, um, you could have garlic. And that's what we're going to add, local garlic. That's something I'm really concerned about is Chinese garlic. There's a, like those super white bleached garlics. Um, so here's a giant clove. I'm just going to smash that open a little bit to release the flavour. What you can use this bone broth for um, is like um, yeah, recovery food, like recover as a as a just like in the same way you use like a chicken soup. Um, a lot of people use it for inflammation kind of disorders where they have like inflammation in their gut and they want to heal their gut. And what I was saying before about being vegetarian and eating it, um, it, it, when you have it, it's not it's not as like you're not eating actual meat, so maybe people can tolerate that more. I mean, it's obviously you're drinking you're drinking a meaty drink. <laughs> That's what it is. It might be more tolerable for people than just starting fully on meat. And certainly, if you need to have meat for the health, the healing benefits of it, um, then this might be a way. And you can get all the goodness of kind of coming out of that out of the marrow. All right, so we'll bring this out. What we might do is just turn them over because they're not they're not browned properly all over. You don't add any oil or anything. I mean, I haven't been, I've been a meat eater for a long time now, but I've never made this before, and this is really, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I just, I don't cut animals, I can look inside them when I eat them. Um, it took me ages to transition from being, um, like, a vegetarian to a meat eater. For almost a year, I couldn't cook my own meat. I remember I used to just go to a cafe, restaurant, and have a, ca and have a steak once a week or something like that, because I felt like that. But there was no way I could have cooked a steak. There's no way I could have like stomached the smell of the meat or anything like that. And so, yeah, I, I understand it takes time for people to change. And sometimes, like the reason why I changed is because like part of me deep down inside the Chinese medicine, part of me knows that like that that's not a healthy way to live is to be completely vegetarian forever. But also, and so I knew that all along. So I was vegetarian all the way through my Chinese medicine school time and all the teachers and even when China, the first time I was in China for a whole three months, like the teachers are trying to force meat on you, the doctors, and they're like saying, oh, you're gonna be weak and feeble because you don't eat meat, um, you won't be strong. <laughs> and like in their, in, their, in their Chinese blunt 
straight out way as they do. Um, and so, I, and all that, so all that time, the first time I was in China for three months studying Chinese medicine, like working in the hospital, I, I was like struggling to find any food to eat because it was just so, it, it, meat is such an intrinsic part of their diet. Even the word vegetarian in China means a person who loves vegetables. That doesn't exclude you from eating meat. That's not until you're a vegetarian. Suits I ran, you say, oh, what, what suits I ran? Like, I'm a vegetarian. And it basically means I'm a lover of vegetables. So put a lot of vegetables on my plate with my meat, please. Um, it doesn't mean don't put meaty sauce all over my vegetables. And so um, I managed to get through three months in China without eating any meat, to, to my knowledge. And I, I mean, I could taste what, 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 it would just be disgusting to me and I wouldn't want to eat it. But I'm sure there was like oyster sauce and things that I you know, normally wouldn't have had at home had, had I been cooking it all at home. Because when I was in China that first time, 2001, like... I was just living in a hotel for three months and you can't um, cook for yourself there. So you're always eating out and it's cheaper to do that. And it's, the food is like, you know, pretty nice and fresh. And then you just get fresh food for like $2.50 Australian for a, a nice, you know, meat, meat and veggies and rice. And that's a whole meal. Anyway, so um, what I was saying is the, um, like, I, I can understand how it, it's hard. So for me, it was more, the, the, the decision was in my mind. I wanted to eat meat. And I worked, actually, it happened, I think, 2005 or six. I think it was the trip in 2005, maybe. Because, I mean, I know I was vegetarian for nine years, so I would have been, I became vegetarian when I was 16, so 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yeah, so it would have been about 2005. It would have been about 25, 24. And I was in China. That's the second time. And I was there to do some research. And I was just one day I woke up and I thought, you know what? I'm going to eat meat today. And I, the first meat I actually ever ate was Chinese KFC. <laughs> um, some kind of chick. It was either Chinese KFC. I did definitely eat Chinese KFC, which is probably KF no. Who knows what it is. Like, could have been Kentucky Fried Rat. Like, I don't know. I'm not saying anything about Chinese KFC. But you don't, I, I, you literally would, I wouldn't have known because I haven't tasted chicken for nine years, so I wouldn't know. But it tasted pretty bloody good. Um, and it was good enough for me to want to eat it again. And so I ate, and I ate some other chicken, like just some, I mean, chicken in China is like, you know, you've ordered chicken and there's a bloody chicken head popping up its head, beak towards you. So that's, it's, it's kind of like, it's confronting. And that's what I'm getting at with these, with these bones. They're confronting. That's like, hmm. So what's important about bone broth, this is a bit of a rant for people that love to hear me rant on. <laughs> I know some of you do, because um, I see that you watch all the video. <laughs> um, anyway, um, so what's good about, what's important about bone broth is firstly where you get those bones from. And so you've got to find a butcher near you or, you know, accessible to you. And I was talking to this butcher guy today, yesterday, sorry, in Perth, where I bought these bones. And he said to me, oh, look, people come from all over. People come from Jinjin, which is far away from um, Inglewood, to, to, to go there, just to come up to his butcher, to butchery and, and to get his stuff. Because I said, look, your place is amazing. It's really good. Um, and it, look, there. the good thing is people are getting aware of it. And so there are more places like this happen, open and, and available. So um, opening up, like stores opening up. But at the same time, the expense can sometimes put people off it. And what I would say is what's better about it is, okay, if the – Think about the budget you would spend on meat now, like just shopping at your at your Woolworths or your Coles or your, your, your Costco or wherever you shop. I don't know what American shops are. Um, but uh, um, Trustmart or Tesco or whatever they have there, you know, those kind of things. Um, think about how much you would spend on meat or budget it out. Go through your, go through your receipts and find, find, your, find your, your shopping receipts and, and find out how much money you'd spend on meat, chicken, fish, that kind of stuff at, at the supermarket and think, okay, well, I'm already spending that much money on meat. Let me just spend that much money on organic, good quality meats. Um, that's what I'm going to do for myself now. Um, like that, that's, I'm going to do that as a little experiment for this kind of coming week, fortnight, or well, month probably at least, and probably could do it for do it but i'll do it as a little experiment maybe on this channel so people can see um and just buy less just have less meat but have good quality meat so you know what you're having is good quality and you take the time to make it properly and make it how you want to and i'm big into freezing portions if that's what you need to do like it's not the greatest thing to do in chinese medicine to freeze food and then reheat it but that's a lot better for you to make your own meals and freeze them and reheat them than buy already frozen meals and be eating that or be buying takeaways and things like that so think about all the meat that you that you consume, um, where you get that from, and 
you know, so then, you know, or go out and you treat yourself to a, like go to an organic butchery and that, that makes the meat in the place and, and have the meat there. Don't make it yourself, a, you know. Um, it's a lot of restaurants now that do the farm to table sort of situation meats. Um, so what I'm getting at is the cost doesn't have to go up. You just eat less meat and that's probably healthier in two ways. It's healthier for the environment because we don't really need to consume as much meat. It's healthier for you because you're not consuming all this crappy meat. And the, the, the downside is the, is the convenience of some of these added, the added meats in there. But do you need that much quantity? Like let's say you use bacon and you buy a kilo of the cheap bacon, which I've done, for, you know, I, I do that. Um, and you use that. And do, do you really need that much bacon or could you get away with a lot less bacon and still get that bacony flavour in your foods? Um, and then, you know, you just buy, you know, buy a third or half less bacon because it's double the price. Um, just by half, you know, if it's double the price, buy half of the bacon that you'd normally use. So that's what I'm suggesting that you do. Um, okay, so these are looking nice and browned now. And what we're going to do is I'm just going to put these into the slow cooker. Actually, now my kitchen is smelling <laughs> like that like that guy's shop that I went to yesterday, the butcher shop. Because they had like a little store where you could buy food. Mm. So it was kind of, it was confronting for me. It was overwhelming the smell. And it was like, it was too much, but it was, I was like, well, you need to deal with it, Marie. <laughs> you just need to sort of, in a way, enjoy it. Now, all this, this is ridiculous. He's given me way too much because I told him I had a normal size I, as in, I was thinking big and small like this little. So I'm just going to put some in this little. I've got this like midget slow cooker, really tiny one, which is this super really cute one. So I'm going to put some in that and mix, put some veggies in that because. And I might just do no Chinese herbs in that one, just the veggies, just a bit of veggies. Okay, so I hope you've enjoyed that so far. I put the bones all into the pot, and um, these have been these are boiling up for a couple of hours now. This is the other one, the little one. So this one's not not got any Chinese herbs in it, just as a little experiment. And then this one here has got the Chinese medicine in it, the Chuan Shong and the Dung Hui. Okay, so what's happened is we've left the meat overnight and um, so it's been cooking for several hours now and let's go and see what it looks like and um, how we can um, strain it and get it ready to go. Okay, so you can see in the slow cooker here, these are the ones that have been going overnight and I've, just, I've only just turned them off. <clears throat> so you can already see a layer of fat is starting to brew on the top there. Um, let's have a look at the see if can kind of zoom in on that. So you can see that a layer of fat is starting to form on the top there. Now that's the one with the dung guay in it. And then this little slow cooker is the one with no dung guay, just the just this pure bone broth. And it has boiled down some. Um, so this one, you know, th this... I tried to keep them as full as possible. Um, so now what we need to do is take out the, the bones and just have just basically strain out the broth. So I've got a little container here. Um, and you need to have some containers to put them into the freezer in. A scoop of the bone broth. And you can see that there's a lot of fat in it. Now what the um, butcher did also tell me is you can scoop out the marrow out of this. You can eat that or I guess, oh there we go, it's just coming out of its own accord. So that's, that's all like really good for you in Chinese medicine. Um, so bones relate to the kidneys and the water element and that marrow relates to like 
In TCM, they talk about Jing. Now, in classical Chinese medicine, we don't really talk about Jing too much. We also talk about Yang. Um, so whichever way you think of it, it's the same idea that your body needs to store the essence or the store. So your Jing is where it translates to essence. So that's that marrow on the container by itself. Yeah, so why are we doing this in a Chinese medicine sense? Because by boiling the bones, you're getting the, you're getting the nu as much nutrient out of that marrow as you, as you can. That's that piece of tendon that he gave me. So I'm just going to chuck that in there so it can drain off all the liquid off it. And I guess, look, you are getting some meaty bits, so you could you could eat some of this meaty bits. I'm sure you could. Um, let's try it out. Mm. And there's another, it's pretty hot still, that's why I'm just doing slowly. Another bit of the marrow. Yeah, so I'll just scrape that out. So it's out, I can just kind of... Oh, pour it all out. You can kind of see the big bits of dung guai in there as well. Like that's the bits of dung guai that are kind of broken down and all that stuff there. So you're not gonna you're not gonna be eating these carrots and stuff. You're just gonna be letting all that letting all that sieve out into that portion. Now you can already see a massive amount of fat is collecting on the top, and the best way to stop to get the fat off is just to put it into the fridge. And then it's going to go nice and hard and you can just get that lard, that fat lard off. And you can use lots of, you can do things with that lard as well so you don't waste it. So that one is the one with the dung whey. And then I'm going to do another one with just the plain, the plain one. So that shows you how, how you can do it. And then one little trick that I'll tell, tell you about that I use to make my soup, um, whether I'm doing it with a bone broth or my normal soup, is to put the soup or the stock into cups, into portions. Now this was just a cup I had left over. And you can reuse these cups as well. So you, or you can buy um, plastic ones that you can reuse or you can use disposable ones, but even these disposable ones, you can reuse them. Um, as long as you don't break them when they come out. So that way you've got a plastic cup. Now I'm so lazy sometimes, but what I'll do is I'll just put that cup and put that in a Ziploc bag and just take that to work with me. By the time I get to work, it's not defrosted yet and then just put it in the work freezer and then then defrost that for lunch like as a soup so you can freeze it into portions but usually what I do with this this is a, a very this is a rich stock that I've made from um, just a vegetable stock um, and what you can do then is just like you can put this into your food as you're cooking as a stock so that's what I'm going to do with this I'm going to actually freeze it into portions um, in the freezer um, you can put it into containers with a lid or freeze it as portions. But what you can see now is that you can see that layer of fat already starting to accumulate on there. So it won't take long for that to be in the fridge um, for you to get that fat and to then you can siphon off. So you can kind of see that you can siphon off that lard part of it. So those bones have actually made that's a that's exactly apart from the fat layer. Those that's I don't know if you can see that, but that's exactly a thousand mils, a litre of bone broth. That's what that's made. And then this little one. Now, I'm sure if I had to, with this little one, I could have made the same. So, um, the 
$15.40 worth of bones from the organic butcher thing. Seven, uh, fifth, what is it, was it? 15, 1.9, 1 1.9 kilos. So to, let's say two kilos of bones makes two litres of, of bone broth, I would say. Now this one won't make two litres because I've only, only had a small slow cooker. So this is like gonna be a super strong one. And I might more use this as a stock in, you know, in other cooking. So you can use this bone broth as a chip, like you would, like you would use as a stock, a chicken stock, um, a beef stock. Well, this is beef, but you can use it as a stock um, to add flavour instead of having to buy stock. So thanks for joining me on Cooking with Herbs today on how to make your own organic, natural, herbal bone broth um, on Cooking with Herbs on the Chinese Medicine Podcast today. Um, I do have some other videos about cooking with herbs and I will be making more and more videos. This is just me in my own kitchen at home um, showing you what I do, how, how I do it um, and how I do a lot of experimental stuff. And this is actually the first time I've made this, I've made this recipe. The first, this is the first time I've ever made it. So if I can do it, you can do it. Um, it's not very hard. Um, and as I said in the beginning, I think the hardest bit is just finding where you're going to get those bones from. And then um, once you've done it, um, make sure you invest in a slow cooker. If you're intru intru interested in cooking foods and making or, uh, organic or natural or healthy foods, then um, invest in a slow cooker because it's so easy and convenient. And um, especially like it's winter now in Perth, and this is this is amazing. My whole house smells like a meat locker, <laughs> um, which you may or may not find as amazing, but it's it's that hearty, warming smell to come home to, and it's, it's like. You know it smells it smells nice so if you if you're ha having trouble with your appetite um feeling like there's no desire to eat or you don't feel like eating much food in chinese medicine one of the ways to help that is to cook your own foods and it's particularly cooking your own foods from scratch when you use onion and garlic and those kind of foods it helps you um develop the taste like that, that like you know um helps stimulate your your, your digestive um, like your senses, so that ar those aromatic, those pungent things help stimulate your digestion, even just smelling them. So this is another way of doing that, like by by doing something simple. And this would be this is very easy to digest. Once we've drained all the fat off of that, it's just going to be a clear liquid, and it's going to be very easy to, to digest that and um, super duper nourishing. So if you're a person that can't eat much food, and um, you're looking to heal your gut, you've got inflammation in your gut, you've got um, you know problems where um, like autoimmune conditions and things like that um, there are particular recipes on how long you brew the bone broth for th that kind of thing this is basically was um, at least 12 hours of cooking it um, and so that's basically overnight um, yeah usually with my slow cookers I do them in it on an in an eight hour thing so I might make it in the afternoon stick it in the fridge or stick it on the bench and then don't turn it on until it's time to go to bed and then so then by the time you wake up in the morning it's kind of cooked and ready to go and then you can just kind of strain it off or put it in the fridge or whatever you do before you go to work and then it's ready to go so that's a very easy and convenient thing slow cookers aren't expensive these days um you can pick them up at supermarkets in the um you know the, the, the appliance aisle usually um and things like that so um encourage you to get on to cooking with um your own bone broth and if you have had an experience may it be it a good one or a bad one <clears throat> then you want to leave a comment in the comments to, to do so and to